Uh, well, I was born and raised in, in Northeast Ohio. I uh, had two wonderful parents. Uh, my father immigrated to the United States from, from Cuba back in 1960. Um, my mother is uh, born and raised in Cincinnati and, and they met there and ultimately got married and, and moved to, to Cleveland um, where, where they raised us. And, um, you know, I think we had a, what felt like a very normal childhood. Uh, grew up in, in Avon Lake, Ohio, uh, ultimately um, played as every single sport I could find, basically. Um, and, and then went to St. Ignatius High School uh, where I graduated and then off, off to Ohio State. Um, incredible honor to, to play for the Buckeyes every Saturday. I uh, was fortunate enough to become a, an academic All-American and a uh, first-round draft pick in, in the NFL. Um, played five seasons with, with the Indian, Indianapolis Colts before ultimately uh, leaving the game to earn my MBA, uh, which, I, which I did at, at Stanford University. Um, after a few years in the business world running an, an education technology company, uh, my wife and I uh, ultimately made the decision to come back to Cleveland uh, to, to raise our family. And, um, and so that's, that's what we're doing. And, uh, and then ultimately, obviously, decided to run for Congress. After, after five seasons um, in the NFL, and three of which were basically uh, consumed by injury, uh, I knew that I needed to, to have a plan for my life. I needed to find a way to, to transition successfully uh, out of the NFL. And so uh, I set my, my sights on business school. Uh, and my goal at the time, and it's, it's been my goal, uh, pretty much my entire life is um, for every year that I'm that I'm living and working, I need to create four years of experience somehow. And so uh, everything that I've kind of done since that that day has been designed to uh, get as much rich, deep, difficult experience uh, as humanly possible. Uh, and so that's ultimately why I decided to uh, to join a, a small startup technology company, software company. Um, I thought, okay, this would be a wonderful way for me to learn kind of fundamentals of business. Uh, we have wonderful mentors and, and investors in that company. Uh, and then ultimately trying to grow a, a small business um, from scratch and, and was there for a little over two years. Um, and, uh, and the learning was just incredible, um, figuring out you know, what, what the hiring plan needs to be, what our costs are gonna be, how, you know, talk about healthcare. Um, seeing our healthcare costs rise from year to year uh, and understanding just how important it is to, to have good sound policy that actually allows your businesses to, uh, to succeed um, and you know all, all kinds of things across the spectrum and so um, you know I don't know that, that I was able to create the, the, the four years for every one year but, uh, but that was certainly the goal and, um, and we had a, a great deal of success in, those, in, the, in that you know, quick business career. I think with respect to Northeast Ohio, uh, where we, every, every place I go, every conversation I have, every business owner I talk to, every, uh, it doesn't matter who it is, uh, the number one issue on, on people's minds right now is the opioid crisis. Um, and the fact of the matter is, uh, if you look at, you know, what, what is, where is that coming from, from a supply standpoint, um, there's really three key places. Uh, one is is the drug companies themselves um, that are you know, getting some of these through prescription drugs um, legally, but through prescription drugs in, into the communities, uh, and then um, and this feeds into you know why having such a strong southern border is, is so important. Um, a, a great deal of them come directly through Mexico, um, whether that's you know fentanyl going from China to Mexico and in, uh, or or heroin directly. Um, and so I, I do think uh, one of the big things that we absolutely have to do uh, is make sure that to secure our community, to secure Northeast Ohio, and do what we can on, on the, um, the opioid crisis, I think we need to make sure that we're cutting off the supply lines, um, or at least monitoring them when you're talking about the drug, the drug companies. Uh, and so I think that's a huge issue. Um, with respect to tax reform, hopefully Congress will get that done um, before, uh, before we get there, but uh, I think you know, with, res with respect to the economy itself, um, I believe basically the way I approach it is to think of it like its own business in a sense. You want to make sure that the incentives are set up correctly. You want to make sure that you're giving your company, or in this case, uh, your country and Northeast Ohio, all the advantages it needs to compete effectively in the global marketplace. Um, this is a global market and, and we absolutely are competing uh, no matter 
kind of what, where you're talking about. And so for that, we absolutely, absolutely need to have a competitive tax policy uh, that allows us to compete on a, on a level playing field with, uh, with some of our neighbors. Um, and, and also we need to deregulate uh, the economy. I think smart regulation is fine, uh, but not to the point that they're making our businesses less competitive. Uh, because the truth is if we have a booming business community, a booming middle class, um, then this country will be in a much, much better place. Having a dynamic economy is, is uh, not a simple answer, but um, I think a, a handful of things I would look at. One, uh, having a more competitive tax environment. Uh, we absolutely need to be in a position where we're at least on par, where we're not incentivizing our companies to actually leave the United States, um, which, is, which has been happening with tax inversions and things like that. Um, so we need to make sure that we're more competitive from a tax environment. Regulation is, a, is kind of goes part and parcel with that. Uh, concurrent with that, I believe that uh, we need to do a much better job of educating our children uh, and preparing them for the workforce, whether that's directly out of high school or once they leave college. Our kids need to have the skills to participate in the 21st century economy, and right now it's just not happening often enough, um, unfortunately. And so um, those combined with, you know, another, another one I would say for sure uh, is um, to improve the quality of our infrastructure. Uh, it's, it's absolutely true if you travel and you, you kind of leave the country, you go to different places, you'll see other countries that have invested correctly in their infrastructure. They have sound infrastructure, whether that's trains, bridges, uh, airports, what have you. Um, and I do believe that we need that to kind of grease the engine a little bit and make it easier to, to move goods and services throughout our country, um, drive the cost down for, for our businesses. Uh, and so those are a handful of things. Um, obviously, trade policy is another thing that, um, that we need to make sure that, you know, is set up correctly such that, that again, it's, it's about making sure that our businesses um, can prosper and, and are able to, um, you know, grow the economy such that we have the jobs that can employ all the great people in Northeast Ohio. A sound immigration policy begins with having strong borders such that we can monitor and understand who's actually coming into and out of this country. Uh, we simply have to know that uh, from a national security perspective but also from an economic perspective. Um, so it starts with having strong borders. Uh, on top of that, uh, I believe that if you are somebody who loves this country, shares our values, and obeys our laws, and is going to contribute to our economy, then we need to find a legal path, um, a legal way for you to enter our country. Um, but again, it, it, it starts with having secure borders and then making sure that the people that are actually entering the country are the people that we want to have in this country, um, that are gonna make America stronger and better and, and continue to, to push our country forward. So I think the number one goal of, of the healthcare policy, whatever is articulated, is to lower the cost of the entire system. Um, right now, uh, a lot of the proposals I've seen uh, kind of move too far away from, from the free market principles that we know will ultimately lower costs, um, and, and that's a mistake. Uh, so, so to me, um, I think it's a matter of what can we afford as a country, and as such that it's not going to blow out our deficit and our debt. Uh, and, and then how can we, can we actually institute the free market principles that will ultimately drive down cost of the entire system. Uh, I tell a story, my wife and I, um, she's, she's expecting, uh, it'll be our, our first child, um, which is <laughs> by far the most exciting thing in my life right now. But, um, but we went to the doctor and uh, we had, you know, there were some tests that we had to do just like any, you know, any pregnancy. And they offered us three tests that would ultimately get to the same answer. Uh, and the question I asked the doctor was, well, which one costs the less, the least? And she said, well, I have no idea, but it doesn't matter because it's, you know, your insurance is going to pick it up. Um, that sort of dynamic uh, where the people making the choices have no thought whatsoever as to what the cost of, of the various choices is, um, is part and parcel of why you have an accelerating uh, cost curve on the healthcare side. And so that's why I say bring the choices and the value decisions um, closer uh, to the patients when possible, uh, and I think you'll see um, some cost going down, hopefully. No matter where we go in the district, uh, throughout the state, 
and we hear the same general theme, which is that people are fed up and, and dissatisfied with the state of Congress. Uh, it doesn't matter if the Republicans are in power or the Democrats. Uh, what seems to happen is gridlock ensues, nothing gets done, and the hardworking people of Northeast Ohio and our country feel let down uh, year after year by Congress. And so when you find yourself in that situation, uh, you really have two options. You can either change the system or you can change the people that you send to represent you. Uh, of the folks in this race, uh, I'm the only one that represents a, a fundamental difference uh, from the same old establishment politicians. Um, I've you know, never, <laughs> never been with special interests, never voted with special interests, and so I bring a fresh and different perspective to this race um, and one that I think is, is badly needed in our Congress.